Well, today, I want to introduce you to the newest member of the Mojo Clan. This here is Old Rusty. Old Rusty is an outlaw smoker's patio model, built by the man himself, Mr. J. Craig. What I want to go through today is my process on seasoning and running a fire in this thing. And if you stick around, we're going to even cook some food towards the end. So all I'm going to do, I'm just going to make sure I'm going to get me a towel and clean the racks up really good. Vacuum out any metal shavings that might be on, on the inside. And then I'm just going to give me a store brand spray oil. I believe this is canola oil from the Walmarts. And I'm just going to hit any bare metal that I see. That means racks, uh, the end of your smoker. Make sure you get both sides of your racks because, you know, you may cook on both sides. Because let me tell you, the rust is pretty freaking cool on the outside. But rust would not be cool on the inside. We're going to make sure we get the doors. We're going to get the edge where the door shuts down. Now that I got that, let's fire this baby up. To do that, we're going to open the vents wide open. Wide open is good. That's how you're supposed to live life. Just wide open. Pull out your fire basket. And we're going to fill it about halfway with some lump charcoal. And this is the way I build my fire every time we cook. We're going to get it in. I like to use fire starters, but I'm out. So this little propane tank there had to do. We're just going to get us a corner lit. While that's coming up to temp, might as well spray this metal too. I don't know if it's really necessary, but I had a little bit left in the can. Once you get a little nice fist-sized ball of fire, let's close the door. Close that main lid, leaving every, all your vents wide open, and we're going to let this come up to temp. Now, if you're lucky enough to talk Mr. J into building you one of these, I left my shelf and my nameplate bare metal. So I got to protect it a little bit. I want a little rust, but not completely rusted. So this WD-40 with silicone seems to do the trick. So now we've reached 300 degrees. And to run 300 on these pits, that's going to be your top vent about a quarter away, and your bottom vent is less than a quarter away. Uh, just look at the picture. That's the best way I can explain it. And the way I like to keep my pit running at 300 degrees is once you get that coal bed started, I want to push it to one side and lay in my split. Now I use small splits. So I will be firing this pit about every 30 to 45 minutes. There you go. Shut down the lid. And if you do it right, look. Clean smoke. That's the no way you know you got the perfect fire. So I'm going to show you this one more time. Take your coal bed and rake it all to one side. Leaving that grate open there on the, the left hand side. That way, when you put your split in, you've got air heating it. It's not being, there's nothing blocking your airflow to that piece of wood. Push it to one side, and it will start up. It's that simple. And this pit will run 300 degrees as long as you want it to. Now, for a couple scenarios, in case things go awry, which they shouldn't, I got this pit up to 350 just to show you what would you do if it got hot? Hmm. You open the door. That lets the heat out. Then, go over here and let's kick this intake vent up just a smidgen. That should get you cooled back down. This next scenario it was hard to do because I had to improvise. Uh, let's say you've got some dirty smoke and it's coming out your doors. Or, you know, it's coming out your stack. And it's hard to do the stack because... The thing's got such good airflow, it keeps putting out my paper towel. Anyway, all you do to fix that problem is open your top vent a little bit. Because what you've got, you've got more air coming in than going out. And that's it. That's all I really got for you right now. If you got questions, you can leave it in the comment and maybe I'll answer them. So we're just going to keep a fire going in this thing for about six hours. And get her seasoned up. When that six hours is up, we're going to do some cooking. So on the way back from Mentone, Indiana... I stopped by Porter Road in Nashville. I picked up a pig brisket and some aged chuck roast. And the ribs I had in the freezer. All right. 
So far as this pig brisket goes, I've never cooked one, so we're going to treat it like a beef brisket and just trim off any silver skin or unwanted fat. Shape it up a little bit. That's it. Simple as it can be. For the ribs, going simple. Cut off your flat meat. We're even going to leave the membrane on because I'm feeling rebellious. Shape her up a little bit, getting off any thin meat that just burn up during the cook. Till it looks something like this. And then to trim up this 14-day aged chuck roast. Oh, we're not. We're just going to put some Worcestershire sauce on it and hit it with a little salt and a little pepper. And make sure that you get your ends. Alrighty, for the pork products, oh, I had to show it to you. For the pork products, we're getting rebellious again. We're going to hit it with salt and pepper. I'm telling you, we're going to keep this simple today. There you have it. When it looks like this, all we got to do now is put her on the outlaw. So, old Rusty, here comes your first meat. This is like the maiden voyage. We're going to stick the ribs on. And on the outlaw, it's always good to put the thickest part of your meat towards the firebox. And place it pretty much wherever you want to because it runs 300 straight across that grate. Really no hot spots. After an hour, I'm going to go out. This is what we're looking at. And I'm going to flip it over because we left the membrane on, so I want to get it a little crispy. While I was at it, I was like, might as well flip the pig brisket and get that fat on top. That's it. So we're waiting that hour. We're going to mix up a spritz. Use this wickers. We're going to filter it out. If you don't have wickers, I'm sorry. It is probably the best spritz out there. Just use apple cider vinegar if you can't find it. All right, so we're at hour number two. Nope, the hour anyway. Two hours have elapsed. We're going to spritz the back, flip them. And for the next hour, we're going to spritz every 15 minutes. So that means it's going to be, what, three hours. When we get done, it's going to be, yeah, you've been cooking for three hours. And this is what you've got right here. Nope, right here. All right. When I took it off, the pig brisket was setting about 165. Chuck was setting about 160. Ribs was setting like 185. You don't want to probe your ribs before you wrap them because it will freak you out. They're always high. And we're simply going to wrap them in butcher paper. Spritz your butcher paper, put your meat in there, and roll it up. I don't know if there's a special way you wrap. This is just, I just make sure it's wrapped. Let's stick them back on the smoker for an hour and a half. Just to show you. Here we go. Coals to one side. Wood on the bare spot. Pushed over the side. Close your door. We're running 300 to rest the cook. Once that hour and a half is up, we're setting 199 in the beef. Yeah, about 210 in the brisket. And about 203 in the ribs. I think everybody's, everything's cooked good. Look at that floppiness. So... Let's get it in the cooler and let everything, let everything rest. You always got to let your meat rest. And that's it. Now, let's move on. Try to get this video done. We're going to show you the reveal shots. Here's your, here's your chuck roast. Looking good. Look at that smoke ring. Look at the moisture. Look at that moisture, I say. Alrighty. So this here, just like they call it a poor man's brisket for a reason. And a 14-day dry-aged poor man's brisket is phenomenal. We may revisit this cook at a later date. Alrighty, for the pig brisket. Never had one. I'm kind of excited here. Just like a beef brisket, it does have grain and it's running in direction. So we're going to cut across that grain. I can already see that smoke ring in the reveal shot. Do we have moisture? Let's see. Huh. Did you see that? Moisture. So, so far, I'm two for two on pretty good cooks. So let's get a get a flavor on this thing, and oh my goodness. Fixing to order me another one of these from Porter Road. You might check the description below and order you one, because this is good, and we're definitely doing this one again. And for the ribs, you know, ribs are always good. I do love some ribs. Simple. We got a smoke ring. We've got moisture. We've got a great bite. You know, we can bite her off the bone, but the bone will stay in. I'm telling you guys, a lot of people, including myself, we overthink barbecue. All you need is a good smoker, salt and pepper, and some quality meat, 
in a little bit of time. And you'll be happy. So, get you some of this stuff and cook it. Or do you want them patio models? Tell them Mojo sent you. Alrighty, Mojo is out. <laughs>